This is Wandering Universe. Today we're going to go to explore an enormous ancient art sculpture that has piqued our curious minds for more than a century, the Great Sphinx of Egypt. So let's go exploring. Okay, here we are. So as you can see, this magnificent artwork is sitting just right in front of the second biggest pyramid right here. We'll go to the next one. This is kind of like a side on view of um, the Sphinx right here. And as you can see, that's the smallest, that's the second largest. Now I'm not sure what this structure here, it must have housed another um, structure that was beside the um, Sphinx for some unknown reason. Um, I could look into that in a future video. And this is another one front on view of the Sphinx right here. Um, yes, so I'm going to explain a little bit about this particular monument. Um, it was built in the 4th dynasty by King Kaf uh, Kafra. Um, the build date, this is their estimate. I'm not sure it's plausible data, but we'll see. Um, 2500 BCE. Okay, so it stands about 20 meters or 65 feet tall. Um, it's roughly 73.5 meters or 24 feet in length and 6 meters or 20 feet in width, as you can see here. Now, the Great Sphinx sits near Caffrey's um, temple. And it's mostly made of limestone okay so that's why it looks pretty yellow don't get confused it's made from sandstone it's not sandstone um, sandstone um, does crumble very easily through wear, um, wear and tear due to environmental elements like wind rain storms etc um, limestone is a little bit more ro um, robust type of stone um, that can be easily worked with, easily carved, easily chiseled, but they are heavier than a sandstone block. So um, most of this um, Sphinx is made out of limestone. Now, back in the old days, um, the early days when people had a sense of adventure, they would go out wandering and exploring to see what's out there stuff. And if they wanted to go to Egypt to see something incredibly fascinating, this is what they would find back then. Now, this is a 1900 black and white photo of how the Sphinx looked back then. As you can see, one side of it looks chipped off for some reason. A um, few pieces have uh, fallen off, once again, to do with environmental elements like such as sandstorms um, that would have covered a lot of... Um, and buried a lot of very fascinating um, stuff underneath the pyramid, underneath the pyramids, and also underneath the Sphinx. So yes, it was buried. Uh, it was almost buried up to its neck at one point. So they had to really dig out a lot of the sand to reveal something very, very interesting. Now, this um, apart from this photograph, um, the Sphinx is showing signs of water erosion along the sides of the um, cliffs surrounds. Now, this photo is showing water erosion. So if you see the water level um, lines, that tells you that there was water um, around the Sphinx and also at the bottom of the pyramids um, a long, long time ago. Now, show you an example. This is an indication of water erosion here along this wall and this is also an indication of water erosion here. Um, there used to be a lot of indication of water erosion around the back um, behind the head of this um, of the Sphinx and also along the top body of the Sphinx as well. So that it must um, show signs that it would have rained um, a hell of a long time ago. Um, not today, it only gets like an inch of rain each year, but back then it would have just poured. It would have had two seasons. It would have had the wet season and the dry season. Um, I'm in Queensland, we get both of those seasons. We don't get um, four seasons in 
in one year, um, we only get two. So, um, contrary to popular belief that they think that this is just to do with wind um, and sandstorm environmental elements that um, would have eroded um, the walls here or showed signs of erosion here over time, um, I'm not really um, taking that um, theory. I think it was more to do with water and um, it poured, um, it, so should I say, it rained a lot back then. So there is a possibility, according to this evidence shown in this photo here, that the climate would have been subtropical, um, possibly some um, amount of humidity um, um, when the uh, Sphinx existed back then. Um, I'm going to show you another photo as well. So this is just illustrating um, when it pours um, and when it does, it rains, big drops. Um, you can see signs of water um, leaking down along the side walls around this pyramid here. So that is a sign telling me that it was a subtropical climate. Um, if that's um, left its scar, its imprint of what Egypt was back then. So this is a very interesting look. Um, and this is a new look of what Egypt would have been like um, many, many, many thousands of years ago. So I'm not talking about ancient Egypt um, of the empire heyday. I'm talking about the ones before them. I'm talking about the ones that existed during the Ice Age. So bear with me on this one. Now here um, in, the, in this, um, I'll call it this um, open hole here, um, there would have been a lake or some sort of lagoon that filled up the Sphinx, okay? Up to its shoulders, I'd say. You can see the lines here, um, etched, scarred in the sandstone, that these are watermarks, they're water lines. They're telling you how high the water um, subsided over time, not rose, right? It would have rose up to here and sat there for a very long, long time. But due to environmental changes, and would have been to do with the ice age changing, um, that when the ice began to melt, the waters began to um, lower. So the levels um, scarred in the limestone walls did indicate that there was some sort of lagoon or lake that um, filled this area um, a long time ago. And this would illustrate that. Now, um, if there's evidence of rainfall, um, this means that the rainfall would have happened thousands upon thousands of years earlier during and after the last ice age. Now, this gets very interesting. Um, this is water level, once again, um, scarred into the limestone um, wall here, but at the back of the um, Sphinx. That tells you that's how high the water was back then and then it just lowered and um, decreased due to environmental changes over time. Now, when you look at this photo, um, it does tell you something that it is older than what it was actually believed or what it's been or what it was assumed by historians, academics and archaeologists, okay? They date to 2500 BC, right? We're talking about 3000 years ago. I don't buy that one bit, okay? According to this hard data, it tells me otherwise. Now, it is believed, I'm not sure this is true, but we're going to look into this. There are subterranean chambers and channels um, underneath the Sphinx. Now, there is a theory, it's plausible, that there may have been running water um, that ran underneath these chambers, these tunnels underneath the Sphinx. So let's have a look. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. So that's the canal. I call it the canal, um, the tunnel. The water would have ran underneath it. 
Now it says here two cavities inside the body. There's a small chamber and a large chamber. Now I think there's a very good reason why these chambers actually existed back then. I'm not talking about ancient Egyptian empire heyday times. I'm talking about ice age times, right? I'm talking about the younger Dryas times, okay? Um, that's what I'm looking into. So I think they were used for a very practical and constructive purpose. Uh, the Sphinx was there um, basically to, you know, maybe um, to illustrate uh, the type of us humans, what we were like back then as mammals. And we are mammals, technically speaking. Um, not to worship us, but to just use us as to illustrate um, how we think, what we do, um, especially the size of our brains back then. Now, I'll show you an uh, another photo. Now, there's some sort of door um, that you climb down inside the body of the Sphinx, okay? And this is what you find, this particular tunnel, okay? Now, look at this brickwork, okay, paved uh, that paved this path. Um, it's very neat, okay? Very well done. Now, just remember, you see gaps, opened, open gaps here. That's just um, wear and tear through, um, you know, um, weather conditions over time. So just don't take that in consideration. Just consider the fact that the way this was paved is very well done back then. And even the way they measured out this chamber, um, I'm not, sort of, not sure what sort of instruments they used back then or some sort of geometry they used um, to engineer this particular tunnel, but um, it's quite well done um, the way I see it. But it's interesting there's this door, okay? So I'm not sure what it's used for, um, but we'll look into it um, a little bit later on. Now, this is, apparently there's a lid um, that you can actually go inside the top head of the um, Sphinx, as you can see. Now, I found a black and white photograph that has illustrated this. Um, I think it dates back in the 1920s. Um, some explorer or one of the um, nomads actually fitted the whole body inside um, this lid and took a photograph of it. So you can actually go inside there for some unknown reason. I don't know what, um, but that's um, what it shows here. And this is an illustration drawing of the subterranean chambers. Now, it's a hypothesis, okay? This is what it's a belief. This is a conventional way of looking at it. It doesn't mean it's actually true, right? They say there was some sort of subterranean temple, causeway and passenger, passages for whatever reason. Now, I find this very interesting. There's also other um, tunnels bored down, right down, um, possibly near bedrock, okay? Um, for some interesting, they're, they're shafts, right? And they're being bored right down to bedrock which is quite interesting to note. Now, if anyone out there has any information um, about this, um, please leave it in the comment section below. Um, I would like to know more, okay? Um, but this is um, just to highlight what was there, maybe not, something else entirely different. Now, if there was water erosion, that means that Egypt was possibly, I'm just saying, hypothetically, a subtropical climate paradise. Very nice. But what type of trees um, that grew in the area at its time? Well, I reckon these were the type of trees that grew in that, in that type of climate. Now, this is the hull, hull, hull tree. I think that's how it's pronounced. Um... That is in, um, yeah, the hull hull tree. I'll show you another one. Palm trees. Nice. And this is the Toro Miro tree. Now, this was used for rope to construct the pyramids. 
okay? And this was used for firewood and also to build cranes, okay? Apparently, it's quite strong wood. Um, now, when you look at these trees, these trees are, are similar on Easter Island and Marquesas or Marquesas Island um, uh, that existed um, in Egypt, believe it or not. So what this tells me is that Egypt was not an arid climate um, a long, long, t long time ago as a held belief. It was not, okay? It had these trees back then, okay? So you must be thinking, are you saying that these pyramids and the Sphinx and the um, Kanak temples and everything else around it um, is a lot older than first um, conceived? Well, I would have to say in a plausible way, yes. Okay. So if you're saying, and I'm saying, if we're on the same page here, that it's older than first thought and um, um, all this, yes. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this front-on view of this particular Sphinx head is because it looks like, to me, um, and it would from a particular, um, well, should I say an artist's point of view, is that it's been recreated several times to hide some sort of agenda of whatever, I don't know. Um, was it by us humans? Or was it trying to depict species from another world, how they saw us or themselves, right? Now, if you look at the lines here very carefully, it looked like several layers were chipped away, okay? It just, this chin is too small. The jawline is too round. The cheeks look a bit too, I don't know, they look a bit high, but they look a bit flat underneath the eye and they're too close to the eyes, okay? And to the uh, um, lower eyelid. Now the eyes don't look perfectly round, okay? And the eyebrows are too close, right? The nose obviously through, you know, um, environmental changes and weather eroded away over time. And the ears are too stuck out on the sides, right? That's not how our ears are naturally, okay? Um, they're too um, spaced out on the sides here. So I think the way I see this face right here looks like it's been chiseled and carved and sculptured several times over thousands of years for some unknown reason. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on there, but there's something not quite right about this particular face that was carved, I reckon, during, before the, um, the ancient Egyptians, the um, nomads that settled in, in the country before them. I reckon it was a little bit between after the Ice Age and then before their arrival. Um, so this just looks very, very odd, the way it's been sculptured and carved this face. Now, if you look at the side view, there's some sort of door here. What's going on there? Why is there a door? Hmm. Is this kind of like a side entry? Side exit? Um, yeah, to get inside, um, from the, um, top, um, interesting. Now, for what I can see, it's got its um, um, king's hat on top, or its headgear on top, as you can see here. And um, like I said, the chin is just too small, and I find the neckline is a bit wide um, from the front, but also um, I just find that it just doesn't look right. It does, just doesn't look natu uh, naturally like our neckline okay or that you see it on the marble marble statue um like that of um david for example so i think this has been reconstructed and redone several times even here too okay along this area as well but that's interesting and there's something up there too 
Okay, what's that up there? Interesting. Now, look at all the erosion. So you can see there's a lot of erosion. And look at the lines down here. See these um, dark lines um, going down along the, along the face of the Sphinx? That's an indication of water, rain, lots of it over time. Interesting. This also tells you here, as you can see, the dark lines there tells you there's been a lot of rain. And we're talking about thousands upon thousands of years ago. We're talking about the Ice Age here, right? So don't give me this conjured up BS belief that it was us that built it. I reckon it was someone else, right? Because according to this evidence here, it's a lot older than you think. It's a lot older than what academics and historians have led you to believe, right? Now, why was this? Is this to do with erosion or was this purposely chipped off? You know, chiseled away to hide something. What's the agenda? And as you can see, the water lines, see the water lines scarred against the limestone? That's how high the water rose. And then over time, it started to subside. Now, there's more evidence here, as you can see. The rain marks, how water um, fell along the side uh, of the face of the um, Sphinx, as well as here. So it rained a lot. But like I said, it just looks to me that this face was something else. Okay, it would have been, um, maybe it represented a lion. Maybe it represented, I don't know. Um, what do you think the fac facial features were back then? Because I don't think back then, way, way, way back then, that the face, facial features were of a man or of a human. They could have been of an ape, monkey or mammal or half reptilian, half mammal looking. I don't know. Could it be representing another world or could it be mimicking us, you know, making fun of us, mocking us? Who knows, right? And once again, see this side door and a little slot right here. What was it used for? Hmm. It's a lot of little secrets here, but I don't think they're secrets. It's just that we're just going to have to work a little bit harder on uncovering um, the um, answers that um, they've left a lot of clues um, behind for us to unravel, to dig up, to plough through. So then we can say, aha, well, the simplest answer is usually the obvious one, right? I'll just give you another photo here. This is just an illustration depicting what it may have looked like back then, okay? We're talking about the Egyptian Empire heyday here, all right? So it's just, you know, an illustration of what it may have looked like back then, okay? So, out of all the theories and all the niche, um, you know, answers and primed theories and conventional ways of thinking, there's an old saying that Gordon Ramsay said once um, in one of his shows, um, Kitchen Nightmares. Um, I know some people hate him, but over time you do grow to love him. Um, he said this, and I do believe this is true. He said, if we fall back to our old ways and old beliefs, he said, you're screwed. And he's right. Maybe these people, I'm not talking about the um, ancient e um, Egyptians, okay, I'm talking about the ones way before them. Maybe they are telling us to think right outside the box we're in. In the next video, I'll be discussing the types of modern tools and machinery that were possibly, yes, in ancient times to build the pyramids of Giza. That's all for now.